Hey guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mikey. You guys are rocking with me and Mike's Intellectual Corner. On today's episode, we are going to be diving into Melody Sheep. This is timeless of the entire universe. Without further ado, we're just going to dive right into it. So let's go. From the primordial cloud of gas and cosmic dust, gravity forged the stars. Real quick too, I feel like that has to be like a really important question right there. That has to be on everyone's mind. Like, what was before the Big Bang? Like, what did, what existed before the Big Bang? And what caused the Big Bang to spark? Because obviously, whatever was there before, you know, all of us, had to have an immense heat or immense gravitational, you know, what you call it, to spark that in the first place, you know what I'm saying? So it's just kind of interesting to see, like, to think what was there, what was going on. Yeah. <laughs> Gravity connects star systems together in vast galaxies and steers them on their journey through unbounded space. The relentless flow of time has driven the evolution of the universe and created extraordinary wonders. It almost makes you kind of wonder, like, was there only one Big Bang that happened at, at that one point? Or were there multiple Big Bangs going off at one, at multiple points, you know what I'm saying? Like, because it was such a, you know what I'm saying? In my mind, that kind of makes more sense that it, that there were multiples, not just one. Like, why was there just one, not, you know? Because usually everything happens in multiples if something like this, I don't know. Some galaxies form so close together that they're locked in a gravitational embrace. if we all as we all know that will be our galaxy's um fate with the andromeda galaxy if i'm not mistaken in a few billion years but it's almost kind of crazy to think about like obviously we're you know galaxies have gravitational pulls towards each other and it kind of makes you wonder like what does it look like in, in the middle of one of those like galaxy clusters you know what i'm saying like what does the sky look like in the middle of that because there has to be so many stars in that like it almost probably looks like you can't even go to sleep almost you know what i'm saying what a magnificent sight it would be. As it evolves, the universe passes through distinct eras. Vast ages whose beginnings and endings are marked by unique milestones. The births and deaths of its wonders. We are the product of a grand evolutionary sequence 
cosmic evolution about which we are only occasionally aware. Gravity is the great... It almost kind of makes you wonder, like, what did the first, um, what did the first planets look like? or you know contain or any of that stuff that appeared out of this you know this early time and stuff that were able to appear appear faster than say our planet and stuff like that and so you know and obviously they were able to go through their own like you know uh cycle of plants and all that stuff like what does their animals look like to have almost a billion to th two three ten more billion years than we did to evolve and stuff you know it's kind of crazy to think about creator, the constructor of worlds. But gravity is also the destroyer, because it's relentless. When a star around 15 times the mass of our sun collapses, all the matter in its core is crushed into an infinite void of blackness known as a stellar mass black hole. The immense gravitational pull of these monsters can rip a star apart. They tear matter from its surface and drag it into orbit. This superheated matter spins around the mouth of the black hole and great jets of radiation fire from the core. Although these jets can... And yet, you know, it's even still crazy the supermassive black holes that we that exist today, like Chun two one eight and all those different ones like that, those are probably older than this one alone. On on top of having swallowed up other black holes, because you know obviously they're too big to have existed. Like they're 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 a paradox. You know what I'm saying? They're they're too big to exist, pretty much. And that's why I think the universe is probably older than we think or something because there's a lot of things that just don't make sense that would make sense if it was if our universe just you know turns out to be a lot older than it is seen across the cosmos the core itself remains a mystery not even light can escape so their interior is forever hidden from us Throughout a star's life, there is a constant battle between energy pushing out and gravity pushing in. When it runs out of fuel, the star collapses and then explodes with the brightness of a billion suns. space all the elements that it created in its life and death. These are new stars forming from the elements blown out by supernova. It almost kind of makes you wonder if we, that's where we came from, like, are we the remnants of our sun and, you know, all that stuff, the remnants of a past ancient star you know, saying that may have even had its own planets and its own solar system and stuff like that, just like we did, and it it you know survived and lived just as long as we did and had a life cycle as long as we did and all that, and it died and you know new aliens came along. That's so crazy to think about. Like we're the new aliens essentially. Explosions, new stars being born from the remains of dead ones. And it's from this universal process of death and rebirth that we emerged. Because it was in a nebula just like this, five billion years ago, that 
our sun was formed. Clouds of hydrogen collapse further and further under the force of gravity and the life cycle of a new star has begun. A star was born that would come to be known as the Sun. Around it, a network of planets formed. Yeah, I bet being able to see the the our solar system being formed in, you know, obviously a little bit of time sped up would be the most probably majestic and chaotic thing to ever, ever be, you know, to, you know, obviously not ever, ever be, but to our, you know, little minds, you know, yeah, it'd probably be something to behold, you know what I'm saying? Among them was the Earth. Debris left over from the formation of the solar system collides with the Earth. Earth began life as a molten hell. The early continents were still forming. Land was dominated by volcanoes, hostile and lifeless. So, I'm not mistaken, too, the, the atmosphere at this time, too, was like full of like CO2 gas and stuff like that. So, it, the skies would have probably been like a yellowish hue, a yellowish, orange hue, maybe. But deep in the oceans, life had begun. And something tells me back then too, um, the water was probably like really sludgy and just stank too. Cause you, cause you gotta imagine all the bacteria, cause there was probably like way like 10 times more bacteria back then than there is now, you know, having to be able to form the atmosphere that we have now that's still going, you know what I'm saying? It probably, there's probably a gang of it. So I feel like the oceans back there are just sludgy, like ugh, from bacteria and stuff, which this nasty. The latest theory is that chemicals spewing from underwater volcanic vents solidified and created the conditions needed for the first cells to form. For some three billion years, Simple microscopic organisms were the most advanced form of life on the planet. Cyanobacteria and other oxygen producing microbes began to bloom. These flourished in colonies of plant like microbes that pumped out enormous volumes of oxygen. Yeah, can you imagine how many, how many there had to be to be able to pump our, our you know, obviously it's really tiny to, you know, the universe, but to our, us, it's humongous for something, you know, microscopic to be able to pump up that much oxygen into this huge world. That's ridiculous how much there should, had to have been, you know? And it was this increase in oxygen that was the key to the rise of the animal kingdom. Organisms started using oxygen to respire, yielding a lot more energy, which allowed the development of more complex life. Just before complex life appeared, the world was in the grip of the biggest ice age in its entire history.
And then suddenly, advanced organisms appear. You know what's even crazy too is the fact that you could have entire like organisms spring up from like say carbon based life form and stuff like that. So in you know, in theory you didn't really need oxygen to spring this up. It's just you know, we probably look vastly different than what we do now, but you know, life in theory can still start with carbon based instead of uh, nitrogen based like we are, if I'm not mistaken. Alright guys, we'll go ahead and end it right there. So yeah, definitely another great video by Melody Sheep. Um, he definitely has some great ones. That being said though guys, thank you again for joining me on another episode of Mike's Intellectual Corner. I'll join you in another one. I'll see you guys last year. I'm out. Peace.